Are they going to Hello, everybody. Welcome to our chat GPT training. This one, actually, if you came to the to the last one we did about it, we did a lot of theory. Um, and uh, this time, I actually want to do uh, the theory part much faster because I want Alex to model and to demo um, for all of us so we can get clarity around one of the main components of ChatGPT's success. And uh, when I go through that, you will you will see what we mean. I feel like a lot of people are using ChatGPT, but they're limiting their usage because simply they're just asking the chat to just write or just to do, and they're not clear. And we're gonna be learning that because if we get to master that piece of the equation, you are going to be set up for success tremendously. So let me just uh, go in into um, the, the quick agenda. Like I said before, um, there is a fundamental component of the prompt engineering part I'm going to assume based on the survey, which was amazing that we know a little bit about you guys. Um, I don't have to tell you what ChatGPT is because you guys know, or most of you know, right? Um, what we want though, is to give you the fundamentals of what is prompt engineering because ChatGPT is a language. Um, and just like any language, um, we just need to learn it, right? So um, we're going to be basically covering what are those components of this new language and how can you express this uh, opportunity in a way that you're not going to be spending hours watching YouTube videos because that gives overwhelm and that's just very, very hectic on top of the other things that you need to do um, to grow your business, right? So we want to bridge the gap for you and we want to talk about possible solutions so that you don't have to be, um, you know, kind of behind the computer trying to learn this thing while trying to use it. To give you a quick introduction about, um, you know, Alex and I, we have a marketing agency. Um, our bread and butter is online marketing. Um, we do branding, branding optimization that includes content marketing, the world of Google marketing, which is also known as SEO we had to make a decision whether we were going to just remain doing the same work using the same methods or um, just embracing the fact that AI is here. And then, yeah, I mean, if our clients want to use this powerful tool, our brains can be used much better and we can help teams and organizations to grow and 4X. In this particular case, we truly believe that when you use the tools, um, AI tools in the right way, you are going to get a higher return on investment. And what does that mean, right? That means that when you're going to put, let's say two hours in creating content, well, those two hours, instead of just going uh, towards researching and learning, those two hours are going to be purely to generate income. You know, there's such a thing of income generating activities, right? So when you or when your team focus on those income generating activities and leave the AI tools to do the rest, what we call the monkey work, you will see that your days are going to be more productive. You should be ending your days in just no more than four hours per day. You should be taking a break on a Friday. You should be able to really enjoy the process of growing a brand because you can and you don't have to break the bank the band with that who else is excited with that <laughs> i know i am you know uh who who wants to just work less and make more money i am <laughs> i'm on that boat and i hope that you are on that boat as well so with that being said let's just go through you know basically a little bit of um, um you know mfg and you know what we have worked um in terms of ai we actually have tested, for example, um, an end-to-end -end solution in which we have been able to create a website from zero to hero in just about a month. And typically creating a website from zero to hero, meaning creating the name, creating the logo, and making sure that the client is, is, is in agreement with that, it's a process and you need to go back and forth. But with the use of AI, we actually were able to capture the essence 
in the communications from our clients because one of the best usages that you can have for chat GPT is to actually explain communications. How many times you guys are receiving emails and then after, let's say, three emails back and forth, you get lost on that train of thought, right? Well, with the chat, you can actually just demystify what is this email about? How can I just communicate my ideas better? So using those kind of tools, we have been able to shorten our delivery time. And now the clients, instead of just waiting three months to get a website, they can just get a website in a month. And that's in a nutshell what we have been able to do with these tools, right? There's a lot of information out there just today. I actually, I feel like I sneezed and there's a new tool out there. <laughs> there's a new tool out there. So um, what I want to do is actually go through the this particular part. And if you want to please take a picture because this is the fundamental of understanding this language model, understanding how your chat GPT thinks. Um, it thinks much different than Google. It's it's a it's basically an autonomous um, machine, right? So how does it work? It's it requires a specific uh, prompting is the word for that. So there's actually four main components that will make your instructions to be as powerful as possible. And let's let's just say that your instructions now the new word for instructions is your prompt. Okay. That's just a new word. So when you say, oh, I'm prompting my chat, just get used to that word because you're going to be, you know, sound like, you know, what you're talking about. Isn't that cool? <laughs> you prompt your chat. It's, it's another fancy word for just, you know, giving instructions to the chat for those of you that, you know, uh, were not born with an iPad on your fingers, okay? So um, the first step of that, prompt that you're going to formulate or write or simply copy and paste, it's about precision and specificity. Precision and specificity. Maybe when you think about it, you're like, okay, well, I need to say what I want. Hmm. But it's more than that. And for that, Alex and I were practicing about this yesterday. And then I love, love, love that he really was demoing for me like how precise his uh, prompts are and what does it mean to make a chat or to make a request to be precise because that's the fundamental. So with that being said, Alex, I'm going to um, let you demo that part of precision and specificity because I feel like there's a lot to learn around this. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can share yours. Jess. Yes. Um, what happened? Um, can you show your screen or no? Oh, I need to make you co-host. You crashed, so I lost all that stuff. You were at the very end. That's why yeah. that's that my computer crashed, and then I just came back. So I was I wasn't sure if you were speaking or you were frozen. Oh well, I was just telling them that you were going to demo the precision and specificity. <laughs> So yeah, if you can share um, the screen, I can make you co-host um, so that you can share the screen. So essentially, before you crashed, I was just telling them that um, yesterday you and I were demoing, right? You know, how to be specific in the things we ask the chat and you were doing things that I was like, oh, I thought I would just copy and paste my persona and then with that, it was gonna be enough, but no, I was wrong. So what does it mean to be precise for the chat? Um, I think it kind of all begins with just kind of knowing what the, the main objective is, um, basically figuring out, okay, well, you wanted to accomplish something, right? Um, so I guess best way to explain it, you know how everybody has a specialty, right? Um, some people are great at social media. Some people know social media, but they're not great at it. Um, they don't know how to keep up with the consistency and things like that. Um, so think about each time you have a chat with uh, one of these bots that you're essentially 
prompting it to be a specialist, right? And the best way to do that would be to either already know your goal, know what the end result is supposed to be. Um, and you, if you fill your context window, you'll be able to explain to it um, more precisely the problem that you have. But remember, it's, it's a conversational tool. So as long as you talk to it like a human, like you would direct somebody else on your team, or even if you have a question in your mind, um, that would be that would be the best way to like just do a do a brain dump, especially if you have the app because it has a really good um, a voice kind of like recorder. So you could just literally press the little recorder and just brain dump everything, no particular format, very conversational, just like we're talking right now. And it had put all that structure together. Now, um, using it for your business, the more precise, more more specific, the better. Um, do you have any examples you want me to show? Specifically, like anything at all? I've been asking them who wants to be the demo. I know that uh, Grace is here. Grace, would you would you like to be our model today, or France, or Albania? <laughs> well, let's let's do it. Let's do an example, just kind of more. Hello, just... can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Okay. Ah, uh, sure. Not a problem. What have you tried to create with the chat so far? Well, I have asked um, ChatGPT to uh, provide a job description, um, um, forms for clients. Like I'm helping clients with doing some HR work. And so I'm creating uh, many different uh, forms for employees. So I kind of get an, you know, an idea. I asked GPT, like, um, create like a termination, employment termination form, perhaps, or Hi. give me an so, example of so, something that I can create for my client. So uh, this would be- Things this, like that, of that source. That's oh. actually a really good example. So for example, um, Jessica kind of touched on it where it's uh, priming, right? So, for example, uh, you said employee termination form, right? Uh -huh. So I would do something like, uh, can you tell me uh, what an employee termination form is, mm -hmm. right? So when it comes to priming, right? So notice I'm starting this chat, this specific chat, very uh specific right i'm asking it to, to basically tell me what an employee termination form is so uh -huh. therefore i could reverse it and then start to create it but now obviously everything in here is not meant to be concrete so if you don't like the answer or you think it'd be a little bit more specific or if you tell it one of the details are incorrect it prefers that very much in a conversational manner so for example uh do these like employee's name and contact information, job title, department, date of hire, reason for termination. So this is more or less, would you say that this is a, a decent outline, a basic yes. outline? Correct. Okay. But I I see GPT as a, a, a starting point of Correct. whatever I'm looking to create, right? Correct. Uh, so that, you know, I don't always uh, use 100% of what GPT suggests. You know, Perfect. I read and I take what's what I feel is important and I leave the rest. So, but it's a great, you know, starting point for whatever yeah. I'm working on. Like if I have, if I'm troubleshooting uh, an issue when I'm doing bookkeeping for one of my clients, as an example, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, you know, I don't know how to do a certain task. Then I ask GPT, how do you, you know, do... Um, solve these problems and I, you know, and I tell, tell G, uh, Chat GPT what the problem is mm -hmm. and it'll explain it to me. And if it makes sense to me, then I'll follow the direction. Sometimes, you know, it might not make sense to me what it's telling me. Yeah. This is but actually a great example. And Grace, I'm glad that you're saying this. This is a great example of what we mean when we say you can quadruple the return on your investment with this tool. Because notice how um, even when you're using these assets, this information will be a service that you provide for your clients, right? 
Well, a great way to remove your brain from this is that you create templates and you can package those templates, letting know your clients that they have templates that they can use as a starting point. Your clients then can use that. You can give detailed instructions to fill up that and they can then book your time just for a quick consultation to review what they wrote with your own instructions, right? right. So this is yes. a great example to um, semi-automate, especially those of you who are in a service-based business. There's a lot of things that, let's be honest, this, the, the information that you provide for one client, it, it can be repeated. It can be duplicated. Yes, right. it can be. Um, we just now have the opportunity to provide instructions and a handbook in a in a much organized fashion so that their team can do it and now you can go to you know to to the beach <laughs> with that time. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it, i mean it is really helpful it has helped me quite a bit and i'm you know i'm learning as much as i can to utilize the tool to my advantage mm -hmm. you know uh, which I think we're all looking forward to get to that point where we can, you know, learn how to use it very well and just, you know, tell them what we need and, and then it'll make our day just go by. Like you say, instead of working eight hours, you will work four hours. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I definitely think, for example, this, this basic outline is typically how people would search for something. They would say, Hey, look, you know, can you, what's, you know, fill out an employee termination form. So the idea of, of what we're talking about when it comes to priming and, and setting up the bot to the best of your ability, you have to take what it's already learned and then ask it to rewrite it, for example. So I would do something like, um, can you rewrite this? Um, right, and expand on this in detail. So now what I'm forcing it to do is to take its previous response, which is right here, right? And then I'm asking it, you know what, this is okay, but I need it enhanced. I need it a little bit more detailed. So what I'm going to continue to do, it's, it's a cycle, right? So you're going to take that cycle and keep on cycling through it. You're going to try and get as much detail as you can. Um, and what I mean by that, so in this, in this next prompt, right? So let's say it's writing it, it's giving me more detail. I like it. It's a bunch of text, you know, um, can you rewrite it? Put it in a project outline style, but be, uh, let's say, extremely detailed. Please add bullet points, insights, uh, feedback, right? So now I'm going to push it to give me even clearer outline based mm -hmm. on what it already knows. So the reason why this is important and this part of it's important, right? Anybody could do this who has ChatGPT. Now, the idea is uh, building these prompts that are so, so specific that now it could accomplish what you want it to accomplish, right? If you wanted to fill out your product, uh, your products on your website, if you wanted to know about all your services, if you wanted to um, understand your writing style, if you take the chat and you take all those pieces of content across the web, I'm not necessarily saying the link. I mean, if you pay for GPT, you can use links now. But um, if you just copy and paste from that page, throw it into GPT and say, hey, can you learn this, right? You're not asking for a specific thing. You're saying, hey, can you learn this? Because from here on out, I'm gonna be talking about this subject matter. So. Uh I want to I want to interject there. So can you actually show that like because what you just demo was just a prompt. Can you tell me what this is, right? Now, can you learn this? Um how can they do that? Like ha can you learn this? Can you can the chat access the website? Um not well, I'm not using this specific chat with uh with the links. Um but for example, we're talking about termination forms. Right. We'll just take a general example. All right. Let's say this looks like a form. Cool. Let's just go to a website. Minnesota. All right. Let's do Minnesota.gov. No, these are all actual forms. Info. Checklist. 
Look, the checklist. Policies and checklist. Yeah, but it's actually giving me forms. But what I wanted to do is take an actual business, right? So business management daily, this might work, right? So I'm going to come here, uh, office admin work, people management. Um, wow, these websites are horrible. <laughs> these these are so bad. Termination. I think that website is like from 1997. <laughs> So here's here's one way you could do it as well. You could go to these websites as point of reference. You could take this text, right? And then you could go back in GPT and put it in there and say, hey, you know, can you include this or um, read this? Because if you, if you missed anything, you could include it. But for, let's just do, let's just do our site. Got it, got it. Right. So if I take all the content, all I did was do control A. Notice there's nothing. Um, well, actually, 50 50 has a lot more. So uh, let's go to about. Let's just take control A, copy all the text, right? Then go back here. And since we already created this structure and we're already on this topic, right? I mean, normally I wouldn't do it like this, but I would say, can you please create? a um the form you the form using this reference now this is very general right but now if i you have to think about how you write it so can you please create the form using this reference right so it's going to create the form for me but if i put employee termination form Can you please write that? Uh, can you please rewrite the project outline using this reference? So now, since it, I fed in the information about 5050 AI, now it's building it based on that information that oh, I gave wow. it. So now it's creating a, you know, employee termination form for 5050 AI, which is essentially what we're talking about today. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what else it can do? It will <laughs> translate for you. Like oh, I yeah. have done the, I have created the forms. Like I, you know, I let it create it in English. And then I say, can you translate this form into Spanish or, mm -hmm. you know, so I have both versions. I have English and Spanish because I have Spanish speaking customers that have um, their businesses, their employees are Spanish speaking. So like I'm trying to help them put together their uh, like a new hire package and, you know, just uh, yeah. policies that they need to have in place to protect themselves. Yeah. Um, so so everything is in project. Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a whole that's a whole um, um, business arm as well because that's something that we've been talking about over here. That so because you know Jessica has a very big Hispanic um, uh, opportunity within like speaking Spanish and land time things like that. But just to to close this out so we could move to a, another example, um, the best thing to do when you get to an outline that you like, right? You could keep on you could continuously make it better, right? Um, what you could do is copy this and put it in a notepad. Um, the next thing, the best thing to do is put it against itself, right? So if you open another chat, right? And notice I only took that, that. Now this is now my primer, right? So I could take this and question it and say, can you, uh, can you, uh, I like persona, assume the persona of a senior, HR leader, right? Then uh, let's see, it's gonna say something cool. So now I'm setting it up as a an HR leader, right? Uh, can you evaluate this uh, reference? And can you um, critique it? Oh. And what would you improve? Now, 
what I'm doing here is I'm forcing it to think. It's not, I'm not going to give it an, um, a straightforward answer. I'm basically going to say, hey, look, I'm going to give this to you. I need you to check it out. Look at it. Let me know what you think. Um, and then if you could improve it, what would you do? Right. This method in a brand new chat, right? Notice it's, it's excellence comprehensive. Um, so now when it gives me all this information, because remember, we already, we have another chat that we haven't changed, right? Now I have feedback from another chat. I could take this feedback, put it back in the other chat and say, hey, can you use this feedback to improve your, your structure? So that process, whether or not you're using ChatGPT or one of the other, um, one of the other tools like uh, Claude, for example, that's another AI bot. If you challenge them back and forth between each other, you get better refinement, right? And if you change the persona, you get a different perspective. So making sure that you uh, use the personas or the chatbots in the right way, um, it'll give you the best possible outcome. Like it's it's like a child; you have to train it. But if you want it to be a musician or you want it to be a pianist, they have to start playing piano before they're an actual pianist. Like it's gonna take time. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, this is actually, I'm, I'm glad that Grace is one of the examples because Grace, in your case, um, let's say that you have a question about, you know, how to book a transaction. You can actually um, provide just a copy and paste of, of whatever, you know, entries that you did for that client's books. And then you can initiate a chat saying, can you tell me, can you analyze these transactions for me and provide insights? Um, so in the case of Grace, she's a bookkeeping company. Just know that you can enter all the data. It doesn't have to be organized. Just dump it there and it can provide you analysis. I'm actually using it when I'm creating content for social media. I go back to my analytics and then I just copy and paste all the information. And then I can say, can you tell me what is performing best based on this information? And the chat goes to the data, analyzes for me, and it will tell me what, what, uh, what does it think about what's performing best. So that is in the realm of using a prompt that is specifically designed to activate the function of analyzing beyond the writing, right? It's analyzing. Actually, it can go as deep as if you need it to be in compliance with some regulations, um, you can actually say, make this to be compliant under Texas law. And it will it will make you a comment that you can just, you know, double check with your expertise. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, and sometimes absolutely. there's 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 tools, for example, like um, like this tool Po, right? It has Claude Instant, Claude Instant 100,000, and Claude Plus. Now, I know those don't really mean anything, kind of like, you know, Grande Venti, people argue it's a small, large, right? But there are different chatbots. Now, the difference here, for example, um, I do like the example that Jessica said with law, right? So if I did something for like Texas uh, law, uh, all right, let's just go to an actual Texas thing. Here's the Gov site. Here's the statues. Statues. Well, you can say Texas law of termination on employee. Sure, I'm trying to get the web page real quick. Oh. <laughs> oh, you want the whole code. Okay. I want the whole, well, that's not the code. That's actually. Um, that's a civil code. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, <laughs> Let's see what I'll say. Right. Yeah, sure. Allow. Boom. So example, this page right here, this page, uh, chat GPT would not be able to take it. Right. But if I take this, literally copy all the text and go to something like Claude Instant, right? And tell it, uh, can you learn this and outline the most important parts in bullet form? Right, put it in, nothing clean, just very simple. And then let it do its thing. Everything's been failing on me today, so there you go. So now notice my, my instruction to it is outline the most important parts, right? And the reason why this is important or this is beneficial 
to use, um, let's say across other uh, other chatbots is because Claude and Claude Plus are the largest language models on the internet now, bigger than ChatGPT. Um, now they're built differently with more of an, an ethical uh, framework on the inside of it, for, uh, mm -hmm. for example. But I could take this text now and I'm using two different chatbots, right? I could take that text and ask it like, can you um, can you learn this? If I wanted to start creating structures, this would be a good way to start as well, where you build everything in one place um, so that you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. So the best suggestion I have is definitely add uh, names, like, because, you know, we create a lot of different things here. So add names to your uh, your chats so that you remember what your chat is so that you don't have to keep going back and forth and making new chats, right? Uh -huh. So like I have an outreach template here. I have mid-journey art prompts, right? Like example here, this prompt is very simple, but if I just say, since I already have it outlined, I say, can you make, a, can you make an image about a boardroom with happy people. Um, so now this, okay, yeah, it worked good. Sometimes it won't work because notice how I phrased it. And this is this is what I mean about mind dump. You don't have to be perfect. Can you make an image about a boardroom with happy people? The problem with that, the way that I wrote it is that I didn't ask it to write an image prompt. It could have interpreted that it wants me to, It want, I want it to make an image and it doesn't make images. Right, so how I phrase it matters. So this giant thing here is my prompt. So, and this is this is made so that I could, uh, you know, create images pretty quickly. Let's do this. I'm not gonna take the whole thing. I'll just show you an example of how. Um, this one. Of how this all works together. Because I mean, there's a lot of really, really cool things that we could create um, if you just have a, a structure in mind. So, art pump, journey enhanced. Is that open? Yeah, let's see. Bam. Got it. So, you just go to mid journey, put imagine, and then you drop in your prompt. Now, you know, I'm, I'm counting on it to give me something based off of what I asked it for. Are you showing me journey screen? I am. No, we don't see that. We just see the chat GPT screen. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, so now what's happening is it's thinking, right? It took all the text that I showed it um, and I put in here um, and then it's gonna give me something. Now, is it gonna be exactly what I wanted? I don't know, <laughs> right? But this could also, it's part of the content creation process, right? So if you have a prompt that outlines how to use mid-journey, like you don't need to know how to use mid-journey, you just need to know the specifications, like the, the what, you know, what should you put and stuff like that. So this is what it gave me, right? So very nice picture, definitely could be used somewhere, right? Um, it, if that's the type of image you want, right? Um, but this is just all from words. So if you could create a prompt for images to create images for your blog, et cetera, et cetera, like there's so many additional ways to use GPT more than just, hey, can you answer this question for me? Mm -hmm. Okay. What I really like about this is um, from our scope of work, um, when we do content, one of our biggest hiccups, actually, there are two hiccups. Number one is when, when we try to match a writer or a ghostwriter for one of our clients, it is difficult to capture the voice because our clients are, are usually going to say, well, I've written this, but I don't know what kind of voice do I have, right? So um, we, don't, we no longer need to know what kind of voice is that. 
we just put the voice of our clients and prompt the chat so that it can adapt and speak just like our clients, you know, expert. Um, so that's one thing. And then number two, I really love that um, I can even provide expert level advice by prompting the chat with, you know, for example, we write for um, a company that they do college applications, um, you know, advice. Um, there's no way that I will be able to know how to get into MIT engineering school and what are the requirements. And he has no time to just, you know, go and Google all these things. We're providing for him all of these uh, basically accumulated knowledge uh, database where we have all this information already ready so that we can insert those pieces that are his expertise and blend it with his voice. So in the content creation process, um, nowadays we can create a more extensive and actually high in converting content um, without second guessing, knowing that we have the reference you know, our client is not going to say something that is, is not right because we have the reference to back it up. So it's it's really, really, really good um, um, on that. So this is this is kind of how complex it could get at times. So for example, let's see if I could find one of my personas. Uh, um, so this is one of my personas that I use. So notice how long it is. <laughs> You know we don't I mean? see it. We don't see that, Alex. Oh, perfect. Good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go back to GPT. Oh, yeah. All right. So you see the GPT screen? Yeah. All right. So this is one of my personas that I use. Right. And look how long it is. And this is... This is how you start. So can you assume this persona? Right. Right. So that's that's kind of what you want to go for. Like I know it's long and I know it's it seems like, wow, why do you, you know, why is it so much? You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Once you create it, you could always have your tone, your notice how it says. Uh, here, he's focused on neuromarketing, so it's emotional engagement, cognitive ease and simplicity, the use of attention triggers, the power of storytelling, right? What else do I have in here? Um, I have the writing style. I have um, his expertise. He knows Google, SEO, basically all the stuff that I know now, right? And now I could do anything I want. <laughs> mm -hmm. I could write I could write articles. I could I could do anything, right? And it's basically... And the thing is, like, I program it so that it has, um, it uses metaphors. It understands pop, pop music and cultural references and things like that. So that, um, like, all the secrets. So, so that you could use it to write articles, right? So that you could use it to have it the humanistic kind of like outcome. So, and and what I mean by that is, for example, if I go and I say. So this Sorry. is a this is a prompt for uh, creating an email strategy, right? And again, I don't mind sharing these things because this is these are not new things, right? These are not new things. These are just things that are out there and that you could approve upon. So if I put, let's say, uh, can you execute this prompt for dot uh, dot dot. 5050.ai.com and use this reference. Now, either two things are going to happen. One, it's going to rewrite the reference or it's going to um, summarize it. And summarizing it is fine. It's not that it's doing the wrong thing, right? Oh, sorry, I picked up the... <laughs> I picked up the movies, but hold on. He's talking about cookies. Yeah, it's using it's using metaphors and and things like that. Now here here's a good example, right? This is actually <laughs> this is actually a really really good example. Now now that it's, it's written in, remember now that it's written in, if you can tell it, it, it likes compliments and stuff like that. So if you say something like, um, "This is good," but you're <laughs> in 
and you're gonna talk to a like talk to a person. This is good, but you're in too deep with metaphors and um wit. Can you scale it back and be more professional and rewrite <laughs> and rewrite it in an enhanced way? So that happens all the time, <laughs> but it happens because of how I have my thing programmed, right? It's at the end of the day, like I have a lot of stuff in there. It just depends on what I want it to do. So right now, I think Jess, how many personas do we have built? 25, mm -hmm. right? And they're all different. It's email specialists. It's like, this is the one that I use most for my stuff. Uh, but for the most part, like depending on how you do it, um you'll get a better response now if you want to pass these ai content um you know detectors using personas using metaphors using um a more humanistic structure definitely helps right and for example like my bot every time at the very end of a response it shows a robot now i do that on purpose so that i know that it remembers what i initially asked it to do the context uh basically yeah. like the prime I, I have a question because I know that some of you um, who participate on the survey, they belong to teams. Um, and also with Grace's example, she uh, can be enabling chat GPT's uh, setups for her clients. Um, isn't, isn't there a feature where you can actually um, like share the chat and then the person can actually jump in on the chat and use it? Yes, but once, for example, like if I share this chat right now inside of the chat, they could definitely, yes, they could use this. Um, now, everything that they would get would be everything from the bot from the top, like everything from that point to when I shared it. Um, so now. So they can copy the entire thing. Correct. Yeah. But I'm not going to share this chat, but I could put it in another one. So now just to explain what it did. So. It took my original strategy. It took the original strategy that I put in the prompt, right? The original one, it's identify um, high value segments, send the email, wait, it's a nine word email, right? But then since I added in these additional steps, it kind of changes the structure. So it explained everything here, right? Um, let's see, and now here's the strategy. So here's the subject line and here's your content, right? Now it's a new product. so. I tweaked it to be like this. Um, this is the nudge. Notice here's your, your value adding strategy. So here's an opportunity to boost your agency. Here's your content, right? Here's the link that works. Um, so this, this helps you get a really good baseline depending on how you use it. Like if you're going to do cold outreach, this template would work, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you think that this template, like for example, like this is uh, this is kind of part of our toolkit, not not as in depth, but um, if you like this, you could definitely say I like it, but put my your own personal spin on it, right? Yeah. Like this is good, but uh, you know, can you make it a little bit simpler, right? Um, something along those lines, but definitely talk to it and instruct it because once you do that, you will get a better response because it needs the checks and balances. Everybody's not always perfect, right? And that's I think that's how people look at AI. It's like, well, you know, you could sit there for a day trying to teach it that two plus two equals five. And at one point in time, it's gonna agree with you because it's tired, right? Like you exhausted it with like ridiculousness. But if you actually spend the time and like create the structure you're looking for, not just, hey, let me ask a bunch of questions. Like when you get your structure, for example, mm -hmm. like this structure here, you could take that. I, I would, sh I'll share this one, Jess, if you want. Um, you could go back to your chat GPT, right? Most people have 3.5 because they're not paying for it yet. So we'll use that one. You know, uh, can you re, can you improve? Uh, wait, can you write this reference again and make it more concise uh, with bullet points? Right. Uh, and make it general. Um, and not, not about any business. 
a brand. Right, so this is just me restructuring it. And then from here, if you wanted to use it, you could. Because the idea is that it's now that is generalized, right? So you have the nudge strategy, you know, we miss you, we value your input, boost your progress, don't miss out, let's reignite our journey, whatever it is, right? Um, then you could take that and use it. So as soon as you just plug it into GPT, you know, you could reformat in any way you want. Just um, um, I know exactly what I did wrong. Uh, it keeps on adding in at the very bottom. The ad oh, it says admin. Oh, okay, that works. So notice all I did was I didn't write anything. I just copy and paste it and put it in here. Mm -hmm. Now I rewrote it. So now it has the subject content, dear first name. Here's some text, best regards, right? So now you have a structure. All you have to do is put in that prompt and then now you could rewrite anything. So can you write me an email for uh, to Jessica from Alex about chat GPT? And there's your email. Nice. Get it? So it does it all for you, but setting up the structure first helps right yeah. if i don't like this email i could say you know this was good <laughs> can you rewrite it can you rewrite it and make it more straightforward right nice can so i go to the, the next steps of the presentation go for it yeah okay yes i think i definitely <laughs> the the specificity um i hope that you guys that are watching and learning um understand how specific you can be and then you know just don't be shy in correcting the chat that's my biggest takeaway and also um just uh also ask the chat to learn particular information especially if you're going to be providing a, a guidance uh, that is just technical or requires your expertise now what what we will do um, is because I really wanted to demo the fundamental part of priming your chat. But since you're going to have this information, I want to go quickly through amazing tools that I wanted to pay attention to when you get this information. So, for example, um, these are examples of how can you specifically um, write a command or a prompt um for the chat gpt notice how you know you can ask imagine this is great if you want the chat to imagine an image um you know think this through on a step by step be very technical at a high level and i guess like again take a picture of this i'm not going to go through all of them but you will notice that a big takeaway here is that the language that it uses um, will go beyond the communication that you will have with, for example, your virtual assistant. Um, and that's part of the main differences. That's why this language model is just more powerful because it has more capabilities beyond the writing part, beyond, you know, even like the, the uses that some people are giving to them, right? Well, definitely. <laughs> and I think also like, Ch ask it to challenge itself, right? So I think one of them, it says challenge challenge assumptions and think outside the box. Yes. So for example, a good way that I like to do it is like say, hey, can you think of three ideas, right? And then weigh them against each other, right? Then I want you to tell me which one do you think is best? Only write that one. And then at the very end, put, you know, give me a very quick bulleted small summary of the other two that you didn't choose. Yes. So now I'm pinning it against each other. I'm t it creates three strategies. Then I have it weigh out uh, those two, uh, those three strategies based on, let's say, if I have a digital context and say, you know, I want to create a webinar and my target audience is 25 to 35 uh, to 45 year olds who, you know, have, um, you know, live in suburbia or whatever. Like if you add in all those details, it adds that into the calculation. Well, actually. Since Grace is our model today, she's on the hot seat. Grace, this is another one. 
um, you know, you are analyzing the books, you know, for your clients. So when it comes to giving them, you know, tips to go to the next level, you can use create a roadmap for this company to go from $600,000 a year to 2 million a year. It will give a roadmap. It will, it will give you all the steps, but here's a caveat on this. You can ask now, after it gives you the roadmap, you can ask, can you predict the potential outcomes or the risk factors here? Um, can you, you know, challenge ask, your assumptions? Ask for the, like the feasibility of it. Like, feasibility. Is, this, is this a feasible plan? Is this actually a good plan? Like you could ask it that yes. and, and it'll give you that feedback. Now, if, if you think the plan is good, right? I know that I was doing things like, can you rewrite and stuff like that? But when you ask it to rewrite, think about adding more context, more information. Like, why are you asking it to rewrite, right? Is something wrong with it? Do you want it to just improve? Do you want to improve upon what you already laid out? Or, you know, if you put in parentheses or bunny ears, right, you could add, you could use that as a point of reference. So just saying that to it and saying, hey, use this reference and then, and then from there, build upon it. Yes. So these factors are, are basically the same thing. Yes. So when you get um, this presentation, which is, again, it's kind of the theory, you will notice how we actually have um, examples that you can copy and paste um, when it comes to like the second element and actually all the elements. In this one, these are prompts that are very specific and it will give you the best of, you know, it will give you amazing results. But remember, you need to prime, you need to put the chat into uh, being aware and learn and, and understand more so that you can go to the task. And this is to me, one of the biggest corrections. Um, and I go through this with my husband all the time because at the first he was just bashing it. He's like, no, um, I mean, I write fiction. It's not going to be like that. I'm like, you're not priming it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> You're not priming it the right way. So if you skip step number one, which I get it, you will see right now it's like, oh, this is too much time. And actually, this is where we can bring a lot of value. We can go and back and forth and really do the first step. And that's what we call the basic prompting. So you have a chat that can go into these magical things and magical outcomes, but it has to be primed, right? Um, and that's that's the key here to keep refining your chat and keep improving this language model. Now, the other part is the generation part, right? It has to be contextually relevant. Notice how in Alex's demo, he was able to say when he was saying, um, I have the framework and now I can use this framework for another website. Now I can use this framework in another context, right? So that's why this is here as a step number three. Um, when you take the time, and I will say this one more time, when you take the time to go with this tool and really prime it and really go through the steps, you're definitely creating what it's, it's understanding you know, as the perfect prompt pretty much. So this is um, actually the examples of contextually relevant, right? The other one is um, when you see the demo, it's easier for you to understand. Iteration importance is when you're asking the chat to redo something, it has like feelings, right? So you need to tell, hey, you know, um, can you improve it? Can you, you know, optimize this because, you know, you so and so and so, right? So here, these are some examples of reiteration. You can say the generated content is good, but can you make it more concise and focused? The response is accurate, but it could benefit from including additional supporting evidence or data. Um, another one, Alex, can you chime in here in one of your favorite ones here? Um, I love one. the empathetic okay, one. I wrote them. Which one? I love the empathetic one. I use this for social media a lot. Uh, um, sometimes a caption that I ask uh, doesn't sound like me or sounds too perfect and it's funny because then I go can you rewrite it just remember that I am bilingual and I don't use those complex words <laughs> I like that <laughs> and then it I can relate to that yeah and then it comes back and say 
Hola, mama. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I use I use you Hola, know concise a lot. <laughs> I use. I use words like concise a lot, um, short, um, sh um, straightforward, uh, simple, step by step are ones I use all the time. Um, another good one is enhance or um, expand. Yes. Is another good one. Um, creating yeah. words like kind of like the last one uh, where it said, uh, what did it say? Example. Yeah. That's a good point right there, actually, because that's what I was going to mention. So on the bottom right, it says the wording in the response is a bit vague. Can you provide more specific details or examples? Yeah. Now, the reason why example, the word example is very important is because then, although it already knows what it's doing, it already has a framework, it gives you an example. Then when you get the example, if you like the example, that's where you have you create the prompt from there and say, your example is great. Can you create the framework around that example? Or you know how people, yeah. chefs deconstruct meals all the time, right? They could take a pot pie and then they make it into 18 different pieces or whatever. Um, you could ask it to deconstruct something for you to then think it through and then put it back together in its own improved way. Yes. Like those are ways that you could just make it work for you to create something. And, and the next best thing I would say is, once you get what you want out of the chat, if you get your format and you love your format, do not continue. It is not a regular chat. It's a priming chat that created something for you. You take that and you open a new chat. Mm. Like don't keep, oh yeah, this is great. It's working out. No, if you do it for your business, for example, and you just put all this information in there, when it's done and you after it's learned, you tell it, hey, can you write out a summary about everything you've learned? Yeah. So that's now your primer, right? Yeah. That's that's how you use it to be effective and efficient, so that you could get that forex that you want. Yeah. Now let's let's go let's go and quickly. Um, if I can have three more minutes, we're done. I promise you. So again, you're gonna receive this this uh presentation per se. And you will see that we did go about uh, explaining in detail what are business personas and chatbots. Chatbots are not new. As you know, long time ago, we had like, you know, many chat was one of those. Facebook has one chatbot. Instagram has a chatbot that you can program. And that's actually the, the biggest uh, difference. Um, your chatbots in the past needed to be programmed. The chatbots that ChatGPT can do for you, and there's actually a couple of apps that are creating chatbots, and this is great for both uh, purposes, for two purposes. One, internal information, okay? You can, you can empower your team, especially if you guys are working remote and you work remote, empower your team. Like, give them information so that they can find the how-tos. They can even find the onboarding information of each of your clients. How neat would be great. So you can just go to the beach and your assistants are just knowing about your customers as much as you do because you condition your chat with information that is going to serve your team to access information without asking you. Um, if you created a growth plan, if you created you know, strategic information that is proprietary from your business, you can actually use it for the chat. For us, I can tell you, we're using this to create strategies to really build brands and have the long-term plans for our clients and not forget about it. Because let's face it, a lot of the, the work that you do, especially like when you want to be creative, strategic, and really focus on generating revenue, it involves a lot of ideas that you're not going to see them um, until like, you know, phase one finishes and then you know you're thinking about phase five right but having access to that bank of information will give you um you know one of the biggest i, I will say the roi from uh conditioning your chat and the second one for those uh of you if you already have lots of blogs lots of articles out there just repopulate those uh to a chat and it's going to serve you in, in a giant customer service chatbot with your own information there. So those are the those are some examples that you can use um, with the chatbot. Um, I'm going to actually go quickly through, you know, one um, one offer that I want to 
give to you today because we're very, very, very excited. Um, this is basically an offer where we can use the chat for your business and help you optimize your life, right? How can we do that? Well, we're going to use our SEO package, but in this time, we're going to have the AI um, assistant so that not only we do the content for you, but this time you're going to have the chat GPT basic toolkit. It's basically having like a marketing team on your dashboard so that you can always just use the processes and keep being consistent. I say consistent, um, and I'm going to say this one more time because one of the, in the survey, some of you said um, that you, one of your issues was being consistent with the way that you put your brand out there. And yes, you're right. Being consistent is, is one of the keys because let's face it, it takes about 12 exposures to see something until somebody makes a decision whether they want to work with you or not. And consistency is key. So with this, you're going to be having a jump start in your content creation process. And this can be whether you want it for your social media, for your blogs, for anything that you want to use. We give you that and we give you the basic setup. Um, and I put here like a flamingo thing because I know that we are in the summertime and I want you to think about this, right? Um, what's the real value of this? Like, what does it mean when 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 I tell you I'm go I'm coming here to optimize your life? What does it mean to you, right? Think about that. What what could you do if, if we were able to save you time? What could you do if you were able to be consistent, to plan better, to execute better, to have just a better understanding of, you know, the service that you provide for your customers, make more money without breaking the bank. And I don't, I don't, I don't like to sound salesy. I'm just super excited about this offer. Normally, normally, if you guys were not here, this package is a package, is a flat fee of $2,500. I want to give you a thousand dollars back. That means that you can get that package today at $1,500. Why? Because I want to use examples. I want, we want to disrupt the way that marketing has been done. And we feel that it's it's one of those things that if if we do it ahead, we're going to be able to really give you an advantage versus your competitors who are still thinking if they should have a website. <laughs> your competitors might be thinking if they should have a website or if they should be on social media. No, you are five steps ahead and AI is going to get you where you want to be. So maybe just like in my case, you have a plan to just work for the next 10 years and then retire. This is our ticket to retire, my friends. And it's going to happen with consistency, with specificity, and with the use of AI because we don't have any more times, hours in the day, right? So that's our offer. You're going to get a voucher of $1,000. That means that when you scan that QR code, you only send us $1,500 and we're ready to go and ready to start. What uh, To honor everybody's time, I really want to also offer that you take a picture of this QR code. If I know you, that guy. <laughs> you know that guy. If you yeah. want to have a conversation with Alex, you know, if you have more, I know we had actually another marketing agency that came and had to leave, but left us um, a message and said that they wanted to talk more about implementation. Um, and we also um, are providing those kind of services as well. Let us scale, you know, let us help you. And if you, if this is not for you, maybe you know somebody that can benefit from these kinds of opportunities because they're one of a, they're one of a kind. I mean, I'm, I, I am like a Facebook senior grandma. And I still remember back in 2008 where Facebook was just for you to catch up with your high school friends. I jumped in. I left the low practice because I saw the vision of the digital economy when everybody was telling me, you're crazy, what are you doing? And look where we are today. Boy, had I not done that first mover's advantage, I don't know. I don't know if my story will be different today. And I can guarantee you that this is one of those things that the opportunity is one of a kind. So with that being said, thank you. Thank you for, for thank being you. here today. And thank you, Alex, for this amazing demo. And yeah, spread the word. We're here to serve and uh, to activate your greatness. Woo! <laughs> I'm so sharing and stop the recording as well. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you for being our I, moderator. Yeah.